plastic? Why on earth would you make a headwork screen out of plastic? That's one of the more common questions we get asked about the AquaGuard Element screen. And on the surface, it's a pretty good question. Headwork screens take the brunt of the impact of anything that finds its way into our collection systems. So it would seem logical to have anything on the front lines be made of the strongest material available, namely steel. Yet there is a screen with thousands of installations, some running many decades, made out of plastic. So what's the deal? First, it's only the elements of the belt that are made out of plastic. The structure and drive components are all made out of heavy-duty steel. The screen itself is one of the heaviest on the market. Second, the reason the belt isn't made out of steel is simply because steel is not the best material for the job. Also, we're not talking about the type of plastic they make fast food toys out of here. We're talking about a specialized plastic alloy composed of polycarbonate and polybutylene terephthalate, an alloy specifically designed by GE to have exceptional tensile strength, impact resistance, and rigidity, while maintaining the excellent corrosion resistance of high-end plastics. Finally comes how the AquaGuard is designed. The best way to describe why using plastic elements makes sense is to look to nature, and specifically the apex predator the sea, and the very embodiment of tough, the shark. Much like a headwork screen, sharks' mouths and teeth are the epicenter of quite a bit of contact. Without arms, hands, claws, or anything else to help, they do all their hunting and fighting with their mouths. So they take quite a beating. In the process, sharks lose quite a bit of their teeth. Now, if sharks were like people who only have a single set of adult teeth, pretty early on in their lives, they would lose most or all of their teeth and pretty quickly starve, not being able to hunt anymore. To remedy this, sharks have rows and rows of teeth that constantly grow throughout their lives. When one tooth, or even many, are lost or broken, there's another and another ready to take its place. It's a really cool adaptation that has kept the shark at the top of the food chain and makes it one amazing animal. On screens with steel screening materials, when the inevitable log, shopping cart, tire, or whatever else hits the screen with enough force to cause damage, on just about any screen design, the screen will either stop working optimally, or in some cases, stop working at all. On screens with a series of oscillating parts, if any of those pieces are bent or deformed to the point where they run into the part next to them, the screen will seize up and immediately stop working. On screens that have a series of static bars that are cleaned with an external rake mechanism, if any of those bars are bent or deformed to the point where the teeth of the rake can't fit in between the bars, it will no longer properly clean the solids off and instead push a lot of them through the screen itself. The tooth on an AquaGuard element acts a lot like a shark's tooth, where it can grab and hold objects, but it can also act in a sacrificial manner, where there are rows and rows available to take over if one or even a section of them are missing. The other cool part of the element design is at the base of the element. This little cross section here, when aligned with all the other elements on the belt, creates a grid, which is the backbone of the solid's capture. The teeth of the elements act to grab larger debris, but are also sacrificial to protect the actual collection grid. The collection grid is also three-dimensional, unlike a screen made of perforated plate. All these levels between the hooks and the grid, which is recessed at various places, collect solids and allow a mat to form. The mat of solids formed is what really does the solids collection. No matter how small you make a perforation, it will never collect as well as a well-formed mat of solids. And the amount of solids you allow to collect is easily controlled by how often you clean the belt. When a screen with a steel screening material experiences any sort of damage, which is inevitable in a headwork system, they cease to operate properly, or in some cases at all. An element screen is the opposite. It is designed specifically to keep going and maintain its vital functions regardless of damage caused. One other really cool feature of elements is that they're self-cleaning. Once the belt is up out of the channel and it's time to get the solids off, the belt path is reversed. This causes the teeth of the elements to retract into the belt, allowing the larger solids to fall off. The belt itself is then passed over a rotating brush and a spray bar to knock the mat of solids off the collection grid, before reversing again and having the teeth come out, go back in the channel, ready to collect more solids. And all these features continue to work, even when some of the elements are damaged. That's the real beauty of it. Does this screen therefore require maintenance? Absolutely, just like any other effective headwork screen does. But the elements are very easy to replace, and the screen still works properly even with some of the elements broken. So any replacement can wait till regular maintenance intervals. And here's the bigger picture. Solids entering your plant are going to cause you to do maintenance. There's absolutely no escaping that. 
By going with a low maintenance screen, you're simply getting a low capture rate, and you're moving where you do that maintenance from your Headworks building to downstream systems. Think about it this way. The only true no maintenance screen is an empty channel. If you don't have a screen, you don't have to do any maintenance. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? The higher you go up the line and capture rate, the more maintenance you have to do at your screen. The lower the maintenance screen, the lower the capture, which means you're still going to have to address those solids causing damage, but now it's going to be the solids making it to the diffuser membranes, wrapped up on clarifier drive assemblies, plugging pumps, or something else that takes more than general maintenance to remedy. You're much better off doing your maintenance in your headwork system. The plastic elements of the AquaGuard screen are designed to take the impact of the solids coming into the plant, and therefore the screen continues to work regardless of damage. That's how it is able to achieve such high capture rates. If it were made out of steel, a bent element would stop the screen's function, and that's why they're plastic. If low screen maintenance is still what you're after, we do offer the Aqua Rhino Step Screen and the Aqua Cayman Articulating Rake Screen. Although we feel strongly that the best practice is to hire capture AquaGuard, we also understand that different plants have different needs, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach. What we have done, however, is update the industry standard designs on both screens to help mitigate the issues mentioned here. For example, the Aqua Rhino features quarter-inch lifting blades, which are the thickest available, and therefore the most resistant to damage. The Aqua Cayman includes the True Track Chain Positioner, so that when there is a misalignment, it can be easily adjusted without a hoist. And the bars of the screen are easily replaceable when the inevitable damage does occur. And those are just a couple of examples. So, if low screen maintenance is what you're after, we've done our best to provide a solid alternative to the industry standard. We also offer the AquaGuard Perf, which is the same design, but with perforated sheet instead of elements. And we can convert element screens to perforated design if desired. So whatever you decide, we've got you covered. Information on the AquaGuard, Aqua Cayman, and Aqua Rhino can be found in the links provided in the video description below.